how does a song like Shock come up? You know, what what was like the writing process like from from D Manufacture to Obsolete? Well, first of all, D Manufacture, me and Raymond wrote that record, the music for in like in three months. It was done. Like, three months. Just, yeah, three months, really quick. That we just <laughs> you know what I mean? It was just it was just it, it was just <laughs> like that. It was just in us ready to come out. You know what I mean? Dude. So we wrote it really quick. Um Wow. And um the difference also is well first of all six string the tuning yeah. as in b tuning yeah. right b standard also each song had one click track tempo really yeah oh like it didn't change it didn't fluctuate right oh wow so it had so you know and then we also um added uh we layered other uh, other snare and kick drum tones to give it more clicky more attack on the snare. Yeah. You know, we layered them with other snare samples. Yeah. Right? To give it more of a, a electronic vibe to it. But yeah. you could still tell it's somebody playing it. But totally. You, to give it an electronic vibe. And so that was the approach on that record, is just might try to make it as cold and as fucking ripping as possible. Right? So when it came to Obsolete, um, we wanted to we want we wanted to change it up. During DMA Factory, a lot of people said, that's not you playing it. Vinnie Paul told Raymond, that's not you. That's a drum machine. Raymond's like, no, I'm playing it. And then he goes, look. Like we did we did shows of Pantera at that time. And like, yeah. look, and like, holy fuck, you really are playing it. I go, yeah, use triggers and blah, 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 you know. Um, wow. Yeah, so a lot of people thought it was like all electronic and sampled and blah, blah, blah. And it just wasn't all that at all. We actually played everything. Yeah. But so because of all that, um, we decided, okay, and plus the climate of where music was changing. That's when bands like Korn was coming out. They were like, their production was more raw, organic. Yes. We've had, I think we had this conversation about, you know, Reese Fulber, not Reese Fulber, I'm sorry, uh, Ross Robinson, where he um, was making stuff more organic, using yeah. older, older, you know, consoles, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Just vintage stuff. And that's, pretty much you know part of corn's early sound yeah was that right and so we just saw a shift in the way music was sounding right so we were like okay let's make ours fatter groovier right um yeah. and make it organic but tight as fuck still yeah right and that's what we did it was like we used like for instance on the drums we used raymond's kick drum like we sampled his we sampled his kick drum. Yeah. Right? It's huge. So we layered it with his kick drum and made it pretty much solid, right? Not as clicky as D Manufacture. More organic sounding, right? Same thing with the snare. We sampled every p piece of his drums and we used his samples as the samples. Wow. Yeah. So that was the first approach. The Well, that was one of the first approaches. The, the main approach was we wanted each click track to flow up and down to make it more natural instead of one you know solid kick a solid click track was like at 190 yeah. this would like on a, on shock it, it's just like two or three different uh click track pat uh click track patterns so it'd go like 190 jump to 195 and then bound down to 190 maybe 188 and then back up to like that so what we did is when we did a demo me and Raymond recorded Shock, and we picked we picked the the best version. So when we, once we picked the best version, we made the click track flow with that. So the click track the the tr click track fluctuated in tempo to make it sound more real, more organic. So you, in a way, you humanized the the click track. Correct, correct, exactly. Best best of both worlds, which is what you've been doing since day one up up until now. Like you kind of take like the human aspect with the digital world, and you pretty much combine those two. Correct, and that's we wanted to do that on, on obsolete because we don't want people to say, oh, that's not that's a drum machine or that's this, you know, that's you sample yeah. this, sample that, you know what I mean? We didn't want that to be so apparent as mm -hmm. compared to, um, D manufacture. It's still gonna happen. Like it, it, I'm going, I'm not a drummer, but when you hear the drum beat on for shock, I was like, what, what fucking drum beat is that, dude? Did that intro alone was like, what is? Yeah, that is nuts. you know it's kind of hard for people to 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 to, to understand it right now because yeah. they're they're in the now, but back in nineteen ninety, you know nineteen ninety one nineteen ninety when we first started, 
yeah. with this approach, it wasn't really happening back then. Bands weren't really doing that back then. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So when we were doing it, a lot of people were like, what the fuck? What the fuck is this shit? Oh, man, this is, you know, this is different. This is cool. There's melodic vocals. Wow, it's yeah. brutal death metal. Like our first record, brutal. Sounds like grindcore. Yeah. Death metal grindcore with melodic vocals. And so, you know, obviously we grew from there. And we've worked with Reese Fulber, who was a longtime collabor- collaborator with us since 1992. He's more of the yeah. keyboards, you know, electronic guy um, who really... Uh, was really able to help us to achieve that um, in our later in our later records. Wow. Yeah, like you know, we did after Soul Money Machine, we did Fear Is the Mind Killer, which is the first, which is the remixes. Yeah. Yeah, and then after we did Fear Is the Mind Killer is when we went into D Manufacture, and we realized right there everything that I envisioned of how the band should sound. Uh, I, we did it on D Manufacture. If you found someone to share your your vision correct and someone who was hard hard to do yeah and someone who actually saw the vision as well you know what i mean yeah so were were you and raymond jamming in in a room like were were you uh did you bring in wrist were we doing freestyle like what's uh all the above every kind of yeah there's all the above all the above i would sit um like on a bus going to the rehearsal room because we had a really inexpensive rehearsal room yeah well we were paying like i don't know 250 bucks a month it's like nothing right yeah and so I, but i would have to take the bus and it would take me about 30 to 40 minutes to get there yeah right yeah and so sitting there i'd be like thinking of riffs and ideas and just you oh know. wow then i get there i was like okay raymond i got a riff i got an idea okay and then we just do it <laughs> and then we just do it and he would be like when you do that so sometimes sometimes it's mind. it's kind of spontaneous you know sometimes i would write stuff at home and i would already have it ready to go and i say raymond here it is let's fucking let's do it and then boom wow yeah so all, all the above it could be a riff it could be an idea you had it could be it could be a song you have already done front to back could be a beat could be a beat i remember i remember uh our singer Burton had a had a car, and he finally got a car. Had a boy, and so, <laughs> and so we were driving to rehearsal, and then I'm tapping on his his dashboard. I'm tapping a beat, which became a song called Flashpoint, which is on D Manufacture. That beat, which starts the song, is what I was tapping on the dashboard on the way to rehearsal. Wow. Do, 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 do. Boom. How do you? Okay, for us, we have our phones. We got our voice memos. What do you? What do you? What did you do? Back then, it had back then it had the, it's it's a funny name, but it was called Dictaphone. Okay. I, don't if, I don't know if you've heard of that. Never. Have you heard of that? No. You he's heard of it. It's it's like an old recorder, but you had the little mini cassettes that go in there. Oh wow! Right. Yeah. But I never had one. <laughs> but they they had them, but I never had one. Wow. So did you? But I did have a drum machine at home, uh, Doctor Rhythm, uh, it's a Boss uh, drum machine. Yeah, and you can write patterns and stuff like that. All that sounds like a lot of time, which uh, ties into a question I want to ask you later. But I'll, I'll ask you now, like how when you're coming up with the visions and the ideas, and you're also writing, and then you have you're driving to 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 these sessions and jams. Where are you? Are you practicing? Like how? I, yeah, I'm practicing. You, I'm practicing at home. Yeah, of course. I mean, I had a job, so I had to go to work. And then, and then I had to go to work. Yeah, I had to go to work. I'd come home, and then the days that we didn't rehearse, I jammed at home. You know, and then uh, I'd get on the bus and go to rehearsal. We rehearsed at least four to five days a week, me and Raymond. Wow. Yeah. How long? There was times where I would just say. You know, bass player, stay home. Singer, stay home. Me, just leave me and Raymond and we'll fucking get it all done. And we just, we connected really well. And so we got stuff done quick. Wow. Well, how many uh, months did that did that re- record take? Obsolete? Yeah. Um, It took longer. It took about, to write and record it, about a year to okay. write and record it. Only because at the time, obviously, we got a little bit more money after D-Manufacture. So we said, we're going to build a studio a recording studio so we yeah so we set up uh you know we had uh d88 machines 
We had like four of those, and we had a you know a console. Whoa. We had, we had two rehearsal rooms. Yeah. Right. So there was a rehearsal room with a, with already a hole cut in it. Put a piece of glass in there. Sick. You cut a hole in the bottom to run the cables through. Yeah. Right. And so we mic'd up the drum set and triggered the drum set. Damn. It's mic'd sick. up my guitar. Blah blah blah. And so, you know, we had like a I had like a foot remote, so I could press record. All right. A then foot maybe, remote. Yeah. I I don't even have that. <laughs> I gotta get a foot remote for for, for the cameras too. Holy there you shit! Go. I'm telling you that. Oh my gosh. Okay. So we just step on it and press record and just and then stop. You really can. That's really all you could do with re, with the remote is press record and stop. That's, that, really, that's all you need. Yeah. That's so sick. we would do it just to get it. Uh, just to get the ideas down. 